Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video in the Young series. So today we are looking at individuation. Now first off, I need to clarify some very controversial statements that I've made in the past with regards to individuation. So, I made the idea, I made the, the hypothesis that essentially someone can be individuated. I think at first I said 25 years old and then I clarified in another video and I said maybe I was a little bit hasty with 25, maybe 30, 35, something like that. Now I fully believe that. I fully believe that someone can be individuated by maybe 27, 30, 35, something, something along those lines. Now, a lot of Jungians, if, let's say, a Jungian analyst watches this who's maybe 50, 60, they're probably going to say, and I can, I can see exactly what we're going to say, they're going to say, well, if you have more dreams in the future, you will realise the circambulation of the self, and you will realise actually how little you know, and therefore someone couldn't be individuated, you know, whether it be me or someone else, couldn't be individuated at 25 or 30. Okay, I agree. I think, yeah, you're right on that. But let's just say that we've got someone, and let's look at the Hindu and Buddhist idea of this as well. So the Hindu and Buddhist idea, um, uh, there's a lot of talk, or there's a little bit of talk about pain and suffering, and uh, that obviously gaining, over an extended period of time, more spiritual maturity. And obviously Jung looked at uh, all different religions and all different mythologies and included them within his conceptual ideas. And so it, it's not foreign for me to be looking uh, and pulling ideas from Hinduism and Buddhism to make my points here. And so, you know, an extended period of pain and suffering gets you to more spiritual maturity. Let me de demonstrate this in real life. So there are people out there who have conditions, physical conditions, that they can't help, that they can't repair or anything. And they maybe they've had uh, bad relationships with people as well. And maybe they've had uh, deaths in the family at a young age and stuff. And they have turned themselves, maybe they're only 27, maybe they're only 30. But they have turned themselves into so kind, beautifully accepting of their own inner nature uh, people. They've turned themselves into absolutely beautiful people. And let's say uh, since five years old, they have had crap. They have had utter crap. Um, they've had bullying. They've had this physical disability to deal with. As I say, they've possibly had a death in the family, whatever it may be, all between the ages of five and let's say 17, okay? And by 17, they're, going, they're in college, they're in a little bit mature environment. Obviously, people in college don't necessarily bully each other. People in high school or primary school do. And so the bullying's kind of gone. Uh, they're a little bit more at ease with their condition because they've had it for so long in their life and they feel a little bit more integration with it. I myself have sort of a part, what I consider a, a demi or part uh, disability in the form of uh, spa spastic hemiplegic cerebral palsy down the left side. And so I can understand this from an experiential or empir empirical way as well. But of course, um, I'm talking about other people who have greater disability than myself. But by the time they're 17, they have an understanding of their disability more. And so that doesn't, it still impedes them in daily life, don't get me wrong, but they, they're more accepting of it. And they're more holistic in that regard. But then what happens on the 17 is they've gone through all this stuff and they are a little bit psychologically unstable and they think to themselves, like, you know what, it's probably uh, a good idea for me to see a therapist or see a psychologist just to support myself, just to get a little bit of extra support. And they also think, when well, actually, when they're into, into analysis and they're getting uh, more understanding of themselves and more awareness of the unconscious and stuff, they think, you know what, alongside the uh, therapist, I'm going to actually start interpreting my dreams. Or maybe the therapist suggests it, because it's possible the therapist actually suggests it. I've just got a reminder popped up, so I'm going to uh, push that away and then come back. So maybe the therapist suggests it. Then what happens is a period of five years two years, ten years. I mean, we could just exaggerate this for the purposes of this example so then I can get my point across. So we could say, let's say, ten years of analysis, but it doesn't really matter the time scale, two years, five years, whatever. It's still going to give somewhat of a more self-awareness there. But let's say they have ten years of therapy 
and and self-analysis and dream interpretation and everything, by the time they are 27, they have blossomed into such an accepting individual of themselves and also people around them. And this is why when you see people who have been through a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, and they've maybe also um, been involved with therapy or psychoanal uh, uh, and psychoanalysis or anything like that, um, when they're, let's say, 30, they can actually come across as if they're 70. They can come across as if they're really, really wise um, because they've been through that. Not only have they been through the negative side and they've had to pull out from their unconscious through therapy, all this sort of negative stuff that they have already been through. So they've been through it in their experience. Then they've had to pull it all back out of their unconscious again to unpack these con uh, con unconscious contents and, and see what's going on. So they've been through the negative twice over 20 years. And then, but also alongside that, they've also been uh, uh, along the kind of positive and let's say they might have um, be, been doing something like CBT or let's say Jordan Peterson's Future Authoring Program or something like that to, to make more awareness on the positive of the future. So, and also the positive things in the present as well, not just the future. Um, and so all this combined leads them to being 27, 30 years old, 35, and they are an individuated human. Now, yes, there is the argument that can be made that, as I said at the beginning, that person could have more dreams and more interpretation. There's always more. Jung said it himself. There is always more to be done with introspection. And he said that should always be present in the mind of the introspector. He or she should always be aware that there is always more to learn. There's, the unconscious can never be unpacked fully. So you see, in this line of thinking, you can always, honestly, Jung has, has shown that you can always be individuated, uh, not individuation, but introspecting, always learning more, essentially. And that is not a negative thing. That is something you should do. But if you're, let's say, constantly saying, I am not individuated yet, I am not individuated yet, there is more to learn, there is more to learn, in that kind of way, in terms of I must have more self-knowledge, that is kind of um, characteristic of, let's say, slightly more of an immature ego, or it could be characteristic if you took it to a little bit further um, of some sort of delusions of grandeur or ego inflation because you're not simply accepting that, look, hang on, the unconscious is bigger than my ego um, and I won't ever learn everything. Now, yes, I will still introspect, I'll still interpret, but I'm, I'm going to happily say that right now I am individuated and that's that's cool, I feel that within my, and this is not me saying this, but I'm just giving the example, I feel that inside myself, let's say, and uh, if anyone else says, oh, well, you're not individuated, you know, well, that's just ridiculous, because that's just one-upmanship between, let's say, psychologists, or between certain individuals, oh, I'm more self-aware than you, as Al Alan Watts has pointed out, the whole idea of one-upmanship between the, the it, within the idea of self-awareness uh, in terms of I'm better than you or I'm more self-aware than you or I'm a better introspector than you or I'm a better dream interpreter than you. It's complete nonsense. It's apt because it doesn't make any difference. We all come to this planet as individuals in uh, uh, essentially as equal. We all come to this planet as equal. It's our, ourselves within our own society that builds things, uh, that builds systems of value that make make us feel that we are, uh, m that one person isn't equal to another. For example, money or status or anything like that. And therefore, uh, we have this illusion that one person is better than another. Most people don't have this illusion. Most people know it. it it's it's an illusion anyway. But there are still people out there who will believe, actually, and be uh, under this state of illusion that just because someone's got more money, they are better in some regard than someone else. Or just because they've got more status, they are better in some regard than someone else. But it's simply not the case. We all come here as equal. And in the eyes of nature, um, I think it was uh, Mosey, the philosopher, uh, the, the Chinese philosopher, who said, in the eyes of heaven and earth, and heaven not meaning necessarily heaven in itself, but heaven meaning the cosmos, 
in the eyes of the universe, let's say, we could interpret it in that way, in the eyes of the universe and in the eyes of nature on Earth, we are all equal, everyone's all equal. So Mosey believed, uh, there is some flaws to this conceptual idea, idea, but Mosey believed that essentially we should all treat each other as equals and show equal love for one another. And, and it is a very, very good idea um, in its kind of um, first basic understanding of it. The problem we come to, of course, is that there's different personalities and therefore we, we end up just clashing with people just naturally. Uh, but it is a good idea on the basis and it's one that is very, very true. And so, really, that kind of one-upmanship is just a, simply a game um, that, that is absolutely stupid. So what I would say is if, let's say, you have got to a very good self-understanding and you feel, you really do feel inside yourself uh, you can feel, you can see, you can understand the anima, you can understand the anima. I don't mean by an intellectual viewpoint, not just by an intellectual view, maybe by an intellectual viewpoint, but also actually feeling these within yourself, feeling this wholeness, feeling this balance, feeling this um, sense of clarity, of freedom of, of letting go of maybe even slight dis disattachment to the body not in the sense of a depersonalization experience but just in the sense of feeling a lightness in the body now i've not really read too much on the idea in humanistic psychology of peak experiences but i would imagine this is what i'm kind of uh, talking about here is these kind of more peak experiences that obviously in that idea self-actualizing individuals feel um, and, and therefore self-actualization in a way I suppose could be integrated within individuation in one regard it's a it's a subset of individuation in, in some regard really and um, and so uh, yeah that could be kind of paralleled with that really and uh, and if you really feel that I would just say yeah say say to yourself you're individuated say that I am an individuated person and again that it elevates your sense of um, freedom sense of just relaxed in your own personality but please do not do not let that turn into egoflation or delusions of grandeur, grandeur, because there is a very, very fine line between saying, oh yeah, I feel I'm individuated now, I really do, I've been through enough psychoanalysis, I've been through enough things in my life where I feel, yeah, I'm present, I'm here, I, I am actually individuated. And then just saying, yeah, yeah I'm individuated, I'm awesome, I'm, I'm this, and then obviously almost letting... Uh, the self archetype or, uh, or or almost even like a wise old man or almost god archetype in your psyche just inflate you and you just think oh yeah this is awesome all the rest of it and and you just go like proper ego inflation uh, like cra crazy ego inflation levels and i've had i have had close i've had close kind of uh, quarters with this kind of god, let's say this god archetype or god ideal, um, it's you've got to be very, very, very careful um, of the presence of, let's say, such an archetype in the psyche. Um, you you really have got to be um, focused and grounded and and mature with it. So um, yeah, but I think that if, let's say, for you personally, you would feel that, then you know that that sense of I am individuated, then yeah. Tell yourself that in a grounded, holistic way and accept yourself in such a way. But before individuation, even if you aren't individuated or you don't feel at all individuated, accept yourself as that as well. That is the most important thing. Because if you do not accept your pos position in the present moment within reality, um, then you won't be able to ever realise individuation in any capacity because you're not accepting yourself in, 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 in your wholeness. Let's say you might accept certain parts of yourself, but you don't accept a part of the shadow or you don't accept, or maybe you've got a little bit of um, disassociation with the persona. So instead of associating with the persona completely, you're, you're kind of using it in your, your daily life and you feel an element of separation there. Um, but so you know, you've got to accept all these things as they are. And when you accept all those things, even in their un unintegrated state, 
you'll find actually that you become more content. And it was actually Carl Rogers who was the humanistic psychologist who said, um, it's curious, as soon as I accept myself as I am right now, uh, then I can change. And actually, funnily enough, it's a good thing I put that quote in there because I've been talking quite a lot on that sort of theme, really. And obviously, I don't necessarily want to take credit for that myself. Um, you know, there's a lot in there of what I've just been talking about, really indirectly um, from Carl Rogers, although saying that, I haven't really looked into humanistic psychology that much. So I'm assuming that within his work, actually, uh, what I've just touched upon there will also somewhat be in his work as well. Um, it's actually weird because sometimes I I have ideas myself and then, and I've not read anything. Right? It's weird. I don't know how I do it. I've not read anything. I really, I, I, I am totally baffled with how this happens. But I've not read anything on that certain thing. Or I might have only read like a small little thing on it. And then suddenly... Uh, I read more on it, and then it's it's talking about exactly what I feel. Not necessarily from a conception that I have drawn up myself, but just what I feel inside myself, and, and I relate to it so much. You know, I mean, really, it's just relation, isn't it? Because um, we all have, uh, well, a lot of people have similar experiences in life. A lot of people have dis different experiences as well. But a lot of people have similar experiences. And so... Um, you know, you, you would be able to relate to people in terms of what they've written in books and stuff. It's just a natural thing, you would imagine. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of a little bit on that side of things in terms of, you know, the uh, one-upmanship of things within that sort of realm, within psychology or self-awareness, um, the kind of idea of possibly how you could be individuated at young age. So what actually is individuation? I mean, it's one of those really weird things that's very, very hard to define because it's essentially a wholeness, a, a, a functioning um, between all the different aspects of the psyche in such a way that it allows someone to um, be more themselves, free, you know, a, a very good version of themselves, essentially. That's what, that's one aspect of individuation. It's this you know, function and everything together to maybe not the best that they can be because, as I say, there's always something in the unconscious that is maybe some little small complex or something like that. There's always there's always things back there. Um, so it's never that you can have 100% efficient, efficiency with this, but it's that you've accepted to the best conscious degree that you can all these different things working together. So I'd say the shadow, you've obviously, into, let's say you're a man, uh, you've integrated your animal or you're a woman, you've integrated your animus, or let's say um, that maybe as a man you had more identification with the mother in your early life and therefore you may have an overconscious anima and therefore you go out there into the world and try and integrate more of your animus instead and that can happen as I think I talked about in the anima animus video or the vice versa with the woman as well so um yeah I mean it's just this you know integration and then also acceptance as well and it's also uh when I touched upon the circambulation in the other video you know when I draw that, drew that circle and you've got the self in the middle and you'll never actually realize the self in its entirety but you'll go around and then you'll you'll come back on yourself and it'll feel like you're going back on yourself but actually in, in reality, you're actually getting closer to the self or closer to being more of an individuated person. Um, and essentially in that, what happens is uh, that is kind of a form or, or a showing of individuation as well. Because you actually go through, let's say, dream interpretation and things like that. And you see different elements of your psyche. And then you think, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm going down the wrong, wrong route with that one. Or I've interpreted, interpreted that dream wrong. Or, oh, no, I've got a problem with this and all the rest of it. And then, you know, you might be thinking you're going forward for a while. But then you see things in dreams that illuminate those problems. And then you think, oh, no, I'm going back. But actually what you're doing is in the psyche pulling up those problems within dreams and stuff and active imagination to be interpreted, you are actually, um, although it might feel a little bit of a turbulent time, as I mentioned, you are actually being able to get gain more awareness and more integration with them at that point, and then you're obviously getting closer to the self and more individuated. Now, 
Also, we should talk about um, not only individuation in terms of your role as well and in terms of your, maybe even in terms of your personality type, that's something we could touch upon, but essentially individuation as a gradient as well. So I've talked about gradients within Jungian psychology so much and I think I've talked about maybe anima, 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 animus gradients, talked about the archetypal gradients, um, I've talked, and then now I'm going to talk about individuation gradients. But it really, really does seem to me that all this within Jungian psychology is, is graduated. And so then we get to the understanding, curiously, in this idea of individuation being a graduated process, um, and that really there's not one hard and fast line to say that I am individuated because it's ambiguous in such a way, we get to the point of, of saying, well, actually, can we ever even say that we're individuated? Because if this is true that, let's say, individuation is a graduated process and, and that we're getting more and more understanding over our life and we're integrating different parts and there's never really a full, I mean, there might be a full end to it, but it's generally you might just get somewhat along this gradient and, and settle on a certain sort of point of it. Um, imagine if that is the case and then uh, we have to really say, well, we're just individuated to that extent essentially. And, and this would actually go hand in hand with the idea of there always still being unconscious contents there. So there's always a little bit more to do. There's always a little bit more to find. There's always a little bit more to interpret. And so you, you just settle on this kind of gradient from let's say not individuated here to being individuated and along your life you, you get closer to that, let's say, in individuation. Not by linear development, but by the circambulation that Jung talked about. But within the circambulation, there's this linear... It's almost like, possibly, that you have you use the circambulation, but there's also an inner linear development with individuation. So, for example, you go round the circambulation and you feel, in an illusionary sense, that you're not making much progress because you, all these unconscious co contents come up and then you get co totally flustered by them and you don't really know what, what's happening. Um, but actually, on the inner portion of uh, behind this circambulation, there's this kind of gradient thing that's going up slowly to individuation. And then you might you might go back a little bit. Let's say you have a bit more of a regression, but then you go forward a little bit more. But again, is that too reductionistic? It might be. It could be too reductionistic to say that, yeah, because like, like that linear development. And again, we could always just say that, that that gradient scheme is within the overall portion of circambulation anyway um, in some regard. I know it would quite, it would be very, very hard to fit that graduated uh, way um, into the actual conception of that circular circambulation, but that's poss possibly the case as well. Um, but it, it's possible that, as I say, individuation is this graduated process, and so when we actually get to this um, certain stage, we can't really ever say, well, I am truly individuated because I, as I also as well with that kind of self in the middle you know that being the nucleus of the personality there we never get to the self we never get fully to that self so in that regard this this graduated system would actually work because let's say right at the very end is the self is the actual self you can't ever get there but you can land on this graduated scale some point close to there and that is your kind of uh, individuation the maximum that you can have your maximum potential essentially and also in terms of uh, your role so there's many many different possibilities in terms of individuating within a cultural or societal role as well as let's say um, inside yourself as a, as a more human individual let's say but in terms of your role you could let's say gravitate with regards to the things in your mind, your personality type, um, you know, the the way in which your shadow manifests, your persona, all these different things, and also the archetypes that lie behind the persona, um, and also like your self archetypes and stuff. Uh, there will be certain things that obviously you will gravitate towards, which are the best 
possibilities which will get you closest to individuation and there's going to be other roles that are actually going to take you further away from it. So for example, let's put this in the context of personality type. Uh, I am an INFJ primarily, although I do, I am starting to believe that I'm more of an INTP or I'm a union of them both actually. It's quite odd because I am quite logical and quite thinking at the same time as being feeling and judging. So um Sorry, I'm quite, yeah, I'm quite logical in the thinking type as well as being quite fe feeling and I'm quite uh, judging um, as well as, well, no, I'd possibly say I'm more perceiving, but I'm not, I'm not sure anyway. But I do think that there is some level of, of, of merger there between them. And so with my personality, personality type, one of the best jobs I could do is a psychologist or a philosopher. Plato was uh, INFJ uh, and many, many psychologists and stuff were INFJ or INTP. And so um, if we actually work that into here, we can see that if we actually use the personality type in relation to individuation, we can actually see... And maybe we can interpret this in dreams as well. Maybe there's a sway towards a, a different role within our dreams. We'll see that maybe we can go towards this social role. And so in that, there's actually a conscious process of individuation matched with the unconscious process because we have um, this kind of conscious understanding of our personality and what role that might best fit. But then we also have the unconscious coming in with dreams and saying, well actually that might not be quite right so long as you interpret the dream properly of course or you have active imagination or, or even just even, even in your conscious feelings even in your instincts and in your gut and your just feeling and moving through life yeah it caught off again anyway so what i was saying is this is all a part of it essentially and so it can gravitate you to where let's say uh, your your maximum potential is and also um within your personality, what you can do as well, let's say if you're an INFJ, and I would exercise this with caution because you don't want to change the basis of your personality type or who you are necessarily, but obviously the opposite to that for me is an ISTP. So it would be good also consciously from a conscious standpoint, including these within some sort of direction of individuation, is looking at these this personality knowing that that is what you are and that is who you are and that's absolutely brilliant in terms of uh, a part of your personality of course you're much more than just a set of letters there as well i'm not saying that that's your entirety of your personality but that's kind of your uh, the things that you gravitate most towards in life and that's what you enjoy that's what that's what's natural to you, that introversion, that intuitiveness, that feeling and, and more emotional side. And then obviously that judging as well and possibly organizing, organizing your life in um, a certain way, in more of a, a refined way, possibly. Um, but then what would be good is to just simply look at the other traits and just get an understanding of them and understand and recognize them within other people. And you want individuation isn't getting rid of your personality and, and making yourself into some sort of super personality that encapsulates all the different things. That's not what it's about. But it's simply about understanding your personality in relation to these other traits. And also, if, let's say, you are incredibly introverted, maybe just understanding that extroversion a bit more and maybe integrating a little bit more with it. But do not... It's, I feel it would be a fa not a fallacy. What's the word? I feel it. Well, I feel it would just be wrong for someone to change their personality type. I, mean, I don't know whether you 100% could do it. You could certainly do it to a degree. I don't know whether you could do it 100%. Um, but I feel it would be wrong to try and change it in such a big way. You just need to simply understand the opposite and also. Uh, maybe just integrate with it slightly, but that's not actually compromising your own personality. You want to get to individuation um, being a certain personality and being a certain also human individual as well. Um, you don't want to obviously just be this uh, person who's trying to integrate everything together and, and become this kind of horrible idealized person that isn't even human that's this weird 
amalgamation of all these different forms, of all these different personality types, of all these different things. And it's that's not individuation at all. That's some sort of weird god ideal or parody of of, of something or of I don't know, parody of individuation or something. It's not a, it's not individuation. So always respect your own personality type. Always understand and accept it. But also, I'll say, just possibly look at the other other side as well. And also, as I think I mentioned, actually, I don't know whether I... Uh, did I touch on the role before? I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, always kind of getting... Yeah, I did, didn't I? Always uh, be thinking about your role as well and possibly where you may best fit and what might actually sway you towards individuation. For me personally, the self has gravitated to me quite firmly towards philosophy and psychology. It's not that... Um, uh, it's weird. It, it almost feels as if I've not had full conscious control over what I'm doing in terms of uh, loving philosophy or psychology. It's just that the self has pushed me towards that and I have a love and a passion for it. And so within the, the role element of individuation, which is just a subsection of individuation, really a part of individuation, but within the role of individuation, that's what I've kind of gravitated toward naturally to by the self and by obviously circambulating. And trust me, there's been a lot of circambulating and there still will be a lot of circambulation to come in my life. But it, it's very exciting to think like that because uh, you don't know what's going to come. You don't know which ways, uh, what's going to happen and stuff. And, and it, it is exciting. It's interesting um, to see where the psyche is possibly going to lead me and stuff and where I'm also going to uh, go with my, my, my old, also my conscious attention. So I think I'll leave it there for individuation. There's probably more to be said. I, I've rambled again there, so I apologise, but uh, you kind of have to with some of these things. There's so much to to wade through. You have to really ramble a bit with these, uh, with these concepts to be able to look at it from all... Because what I'm trying to do is I really, really try my best to look at this from a very wide viewpoint, a very liberal viewpoint, um, a very holistic viewpoint. I don't want to just look at it from one rigid angle. I want to be looking at it from quite a holistic viewpoint. So I hope that you are gauging that in these videos because it would be terrible to essentially talk to someone about one of these concepts in a very, very rigid way. Um, I know in the Archetypes video I possibly was a little bit excessive with the over-exaggeration of how I explained them, but I was only simply over-exaggerating uh, kind of, let's say, the role of the archetypes or even the archetypes themselves in such a way to be able to really get through to you what the archetypes are, because without over-exaggerating the archetypes, you can't actually really understand them uh, from an intellectual viewpoint. You really need to actually over-exaggerate the roles of the archetypes to be able to say, oh yeah, that's, I get what that is essentially. So um, yeah, I mean, and maybe it's characteristic a little bit of archetypal reductionism in that video, um, but certainly, as I say, that had to be done in that specific video. But hopefully with the videos, I've been clear, I've been um, able to obviously give a good wide view of these Jungian concepts. So with that being said, I'll leave it there guys and I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon guys.